Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is December 30th, 2022. This video is called Hearing God's Voice. If you have never heard God's voice, then you definitely need to listen to what I have to say today. And if you have been walking with God for any length of time, but you feel like you don't hear his voice, you need to listen to today's video as well. I'm going to start with uh, John chapter 10, verse 22. At that time... The Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. The Feast of Dedication is uh, also called Hanukkah. And uh, that feast just ended. It ended last Monday. Last Monday was the eighth day. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do and my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Once again, the Jews want to kill Jesus because they say that he's blaspheming, that he is making himself equal with God. And indeed, that's what he was doing because he is the Son of God. As he said a little earlier in the book of John, before Abraham was, I am. And what he did when he said it that way was he identified himself with the creator that we see revealed in the Old Testament. Because the name by which he revealed himself to Moses and which Moses that used when he wrote the scriptures was translated as I am. <clears throat> so I am was, is the name of, of God. Jesus is the stumbling stone, the scripture says. And the reason is, is because everyone wants to think that they're good enough to make it on their own, that they deserve salvation, that they deserve eternal life. But Jesus clearly says here, I give them eternal life. And he also says, my sheep hear my voice. And he also said that these Pharisees who now want to stone him were not his sheep. The question we need to ask ourselves is, are we his sheep? If we are his sheep, we will hear his voice. When we hear his voice, we hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God, hearing the voice of God, does that mean that 
We're going to hear a voice in our head, radio like radio, television. Rarely over the 46 years that I've walked with Jesus, with God, have I heard what I would call an audible voice. Very, very rarely. And you see that that's the case in the scripture, even with people like Abraham, rarely heard the voice of God. So don't expect to hear something like someone talking to you like I am now with respect to hearing the voice of God. On the other hand, when you do find a true teacher of God, then you can listen to things that they say and hear their voice. In fact, the beginning of this chapter 10 of John talks about true shepherds. And so you can hear the words of God through a true shepherd. But my goal today is to teach you how to hear the voice of God yourself so that you don't have to depend upon a teacher, that you can go to God yourself and hear his voice. To do that, I want you to go to the book of Proverbs, and we're going to read some of the Proverbs today. Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear an increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. That's the introduction. And notice how many different types of people he is addressing this to. The simple, the youth, and the wise, and those who understand. And then after that introduction, verse 7, the fear of I am is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's everyone's beginning place, the fear of I am the fear of the Lord, the fear of Jesus the Christ, the one who came for you and for me. The fear of I am is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 8, Hear, my son, Hear, Father, I pray for ears to hear for those who are listening today. Hear, my son, your father's instruction and forsake not your mother's teaching. What just happened here? Solomon gave his introduction and now God is speaking. God is speaking now. Hear, my son. You are a son. Or at least you have the 
you have the right to become a son once you believe in Jesus. Hear, my son, your father's instruction and forsake not your mother's teaching. God is both our father and our mother. For they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. That is instruction and teaching. God's teaching, God's instruction. And now he just gives the most basic of the most basic teaching of wisdom. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. And sinners can take any number of forms. They can be given to any number of different sins. But here he's going to give you a specific type of sin so that you can understand this command. If sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without reason, like Sheol, like hell. Let us swallow them alive and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all precious goods and shall fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot with us. We will all have one purse. How many people do this, do anything for money? Why do people consent to lay chemtrails in the sky that destroy the earth? And I could go on with so many different sins. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their paths, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. For in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird, but these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own lives. Such is the way, such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. Do not take a bribe to sin, no matter what that bribe was for. You know, I worked as an attorney for 33 years, and I was offered bribes to get people off of uh, criminal charges. And I refused. You, you know, I would, I would work for a criminal to be sure that he was treated appropriately under the law. And if, and I had several cases where I represented men accused of very serious crimes, took them to trial and, and won because they were not guilty. So there is a place for the good criminal law attorney, but not for the attorney who wants to take a bribe to fool a jury to get the guilty man free. That is one of the sins that is being forbidden here. And these scriptures, 17, 18, and 19, say that the people who do these things, the people who take bribes to do something sinful, who lie in wait for other men, they're setting a trap for their own life. And now we move into another part of this. Now, in the scripture, in, in Proverbs, wisdom is likened to the female aspect of God. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you 
I will make my words known to you. Wisdom is going to make a demand upon you, a demand upon me that we turn from our simple ways, that we return, that we turn from our evil ways. And she says, if you turn at my reproof, if you repent of your sins, I will pour out my spirit to you. That's the way that my journey with God began. Before the word of the Lord was revealed to me, as I have spoken of in several of my videos, I was reading the scripture. And as I read the scripture, I was hearing the voice of God. But I didn't know it then. I didn't know it. But there came a night when I was reading the scripture that I did know it. And that's when the word of the Lord was revealed to me. But before that happened, as I was reading the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, I was beginning to understand that the way I was living my life was wrong. I was beginning to see myself as a sinner. And even wept over my sinfulness. And that was before the word of the Lord was revealed to me. And look what, and so I, I stopped doing things that I was doing. And look what verse 23 says. If you turn at my reproof, behold... There's that word behold again. I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Well, that's what happened to me. Because I did turn. I turned at the reproof of God. Because I took the time to read the scriptures I took the time to listen to the words that were in those scriptures. Now those words were written as the Spirit of God moved men in the past to write. And in chapter 10 of John, and we're going to later on, we'll get into chapter 10 in detail. Jesus says the scripture cannot be broken. He acknowledges the scripture as being the word of God. So because I listened to the scripture, because I read the scripture, I was hearing the voice of God. But I didn't know it at first. I didn't know that it was God speaking until that great event that happened to me in the spring of 1977 that changed my life. If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. That is a promise. And that will happen with you if you do that. But listen, what comes next? Because I have called and you refused to listen. Because I have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all my counsel. Because you would have none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. I will laugh and mock 
when terror strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. This is the time in which we live right now. The mark of the beast is upon us. The powers that be are announcing what they intend to do, and it's incredibly evil and ugly. And most people are not prepared spiritually for that. And why not? Because people who should have listened didn't listen. People who should have heeded the words of God did not heed. People who should have followed the counsel of God did not follow that counsel. People who should have repented did not repent. And so, God now has given the vast majority of mankind a spirit of delusion so that they would believe the lie. And virtually everything people believe today is a lie. The whole space program is a hoax. The moon landing never happened. You can't land on the moon, and they can't go to the moon. The whole SpaceX thing is a hoax. All of this weightlessness that you see in the space station, supposed space station, is a hoax. And you can find videos on YouTube that show it all. Now, they're weightless in space, they say, right? How is it then that they say that the moon stays orbiting the earth because of gravity. So there's enough gravity from the earth to pull or keep the moon in orbit. And yet, you've got all these mock astronauts laughing about things floating in the air. They lie about everything. And most people don't have a clue that they're lying about everything. So terror is promised to strike those who refuse to listen and repent. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of I am. Have you chosen the fear of I am? because they would have none of my counsel, because they, they despised all of my reproof, because they despised my righteous counsel, because they despised my just rules, because they despised my equitable, fair way of life, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices, their fill of the things that they were part of creating. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread. Of disaster. Well, do you see? We, did you hear God's voice? I just read chapter one of Proverbs, where God is speaking through Solomon. Did you hear the voice of God? 
the way we begin to hear the voice of God is to read the scriptures. I recommend the English Standard Version. It is a very, um, very good translation in most respects. Um, and also written very poetically, it, especially Isaiah, the Psalms, um, here in Proverbs, it's, it's just written in just a very compelling way and accurately because I've compared it with things like the New King James Version, uh, the New International Version, and uh, the King James Version, and the American Standard Version. So um, it's a good, a good translation. And I recommend you get the reference uh, edition of the English Standard Version because the references in that are so good and they will take you to places you, you need to go to understand the scriptures better. So I'm going to stop this video now and encourage you to continue on reading the Proverbs because as you continue you will see that it continues very much like this. For example, chapter 2 begins, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commands within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of I am. Then you will find the knowledge of God. For I am gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his kodeshim of his holy ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who are dev devious in their ways. So you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her paths to the departed. None who go to her come back nor do they regain the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous, for the upright will inhabit the land and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. This is the time we're at now. See, they're trying to take land ownership away from us. But the upright will inhabit the land. Remember, Jesus said the meek will inherit the earth. Well, I believe that that is a promise for me and for those who walk with Christ. And so, then chapter 3 continues, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Now, in the English Standard, they always translate those as steadfast love and faithfulness. So let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. But I like the idea of mercy and truth here. I think it conveys more with those let not mercy and truth forsake you. See, and you go then to John chapter 1. 
Mercy and truth came through Jesus. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in I am with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear I am. Turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor I am with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not forget I am's discipline. Do not despise I am's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For I am reproves him whom he loves as a father the son in whom he delights. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. Do you hear that? The gain of wisdom and understanding is better than the gain from silver and gold. But how many people have lost their way because of a desire to become rich? She's more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Yes, the ways of God are ways of peace. You know, as an attorney for 33 years, I saw so much chaos. I did a lot of what is called family law, which generally means divorces and child custody cases, and just horrible things. There's no peace in so many homes. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. That is wisdom and understanding. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. I am by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. And they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For I am will be your confidence, and, you, and will keep your foot from being caught. Look at all these promises that come. Peace. Lack of fear. Lack of terror. Then we have a proverb right in the middle of this. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. So someone comes to you with a need that you know it's a true need and you have the power to help them in need, do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I'll give it to you when you have it with you now. You know, give them what they need. Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious person is an abomination to I am, but the upright are in his confidence. I am's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. God has blessed my house. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. And we'll go ahead and finish this with chapter 4 of Proverbs. Hear, O sons, O sons, do you long to be a son of God? Then listen for God's voice. Hear his voice. Hear his voice as I'm speaking to you now, as I'm reading the Proverbs to you, because this is God speaking. He spoke through Solomon, and Solomon wrote as he was led by the Holy Spirit. Hear, O sons of father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, 
Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Go to the book of Proverbs. Read it. Get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I've taught you the way of wisdom. I've led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it. Pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they've done wrong. They're robbed of sleep unless they've made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance. For from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech. Put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. So, Proverbs 1 through 4, written by Solomon as he was inspired and led by the Holy Spirit. These are the words, the very words of God, addressing us as his son. This is how we hear the voice of God. So I encourage you, get your Bible daily, spend some time reading it, and when you read it, know that you are hearing the voice of God. Therefore, approach it like that. And let it sink into you. That's how we wash ourselves with the word. That's how we consume the food of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, Jesus said to Satan when Satan tried to get him to sin. The words of God are our food. We hear the voice of God when we read his word, when we read the scriptures. They are the words of God.